friends today we start off with another book from the history's table now this book is on the first world war and it's supposedly as per me the best book i have read on the first world war now a lot of you who have been following my vlogs have heard that my foray into non fiction and history in particular started with reading about the second world war whether about hitler and his generals etc so it's kind of interesting that i actually do not include a book on the second world war in my top 10 top 5 books on history and rather include a book on the first world war there are two reasons for that the first reason is i have read hundreds of books in every possible combination on the second world war okay from the german side the british side the russian side the american side hitler his hitler's uh, generals his hitler's all of these people okay so i could actually go on and on and on talking about all of them but that probably would need a series of its own top 5 books on the world war 2 that is what i could do justice to but the other more important reason is everything has a beginning now when i read all of these books on the second world war i could still not find proper reasons on a lot of the actions that were taken now some of the cruelty and the inhuman behavior has no 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 explanation right it is too bad but still even like a villain you know if you see a mainstream villain there is always this part story of what happened you know before the he be turned villain or what happened so what happened before the germanic nation decided to wage war on rest of its neighbors in the world war 2 and all the actions that took place what led to the rise of nazism and fascism in fact basically the second world war for all its thrill and excitement is the world's most famous sequel that's why it's called the second world war right so to really understand what took place on the second world war if you really are a history buff if you forget the second world war if you want to understand the last 100 years and anything and everything that has happened over the last 100 years you need to understand the first world war let me show you the book that i have in mind sir if you are really interested nothing beats this book ajp taylor's the first world war i have read so many books on the first world war but this thin volume tells a story more riveting and more exhaustive than anything i have read highly recommend it this is my pick if you have to read one book on the first world war from start to finish it's a very nuanced and a very impartial book the only thing that i want to stress is that why is the first world war so important when the second world war seems much more exciting with its very known faces and known villains like hitler and his team and etc etc why is it that the first world war is so important let me explain you the most important changes in society happened in the first world war the most dynamic shifts and alignments happened in the first world war before the first world war russia was essentially a large but under industrialized economy by the end it had become the soviet union the beginning of communism if you want to understand communism you have to understand and understand how it took place in russia of all countries when it was meant for a developed economy by karl marx and it comes to an agrarian society like russia you have to understand what happened in the first world war before the first world war nobody took america seriously america was not a world power it was only concentrated in north america and a little bit of south america by the end of the first world war america was the power to talk about america and russia became the focal points there was a resurgence of germany and italy 
under Hitler and Mussolini. But that was like the loin's last gasp, you know. They rose and they were crushed again. But the determining feature of the end of First World War was the alignment had changed. The British Empire that had dominated for 150 years could be very well seen to be crumbling after the First World War. The Second World War just put the death nail. Okay. Many other things owe themselves to the First World War. The whole crumbling of the old order, the nobility. You know, in fact, when the soldiers went to war in the First World War, it's when the women were pushed to work. And if the women had not been pushed to work in the First World War, and many of them refused to go back to their household duties after the war, women liberation would have never happened. The other interesting aspect, and for that I may suggest, maybe I'll do a separate vlog on that book, is a book by called The Sleepwalkers by Christopher Cluck. That I did not recommend because it's only a book on the beginning of the First World War. It's a thick book and it only plays on what is happening like a thriller just before the war. As the title says, its theory is that nobody really planned to go to war. Germany, England, Russia, nobody wanted a war. They slept walk, they walked right into the trap. If you read the newspaper articles here in some of these books or anywhere else in of 1914, they remind you so strongly of today's world. If you read the logic that you know the world is a one unity place and trade and commerce will not allow the major powers to ever have a war, you would literally be a reminded of the world of today. So the first world war is a reminisced that however you have seen a world you know in front of your eyes or your parents have heard because before the first world war for almost 50 60 years the world had been constant a few wars here and there between the major powers but the structure of the world remained same the first world war and these books especially show to you how the world right before your eyes can change forever. What one generation may not even believe is possible, the second could see it in front of its eyes. The first world war is exciting not for its charismatically crazy characters etc. You know, though you have uh, many, many interesting characters including the German Kieser and the Russian Nazar and you know the aspect about the three cousins okay in the sense that the head of states of Germany, Russia and England were all cousins and the German Caesar is famously having said that had my aunt Queen Victoria been alive she would have you know pulled everybody by the ears and probably not let the war happen. That romanticism aside the fact of Matras that the kings and these nobility had become irrelevant by the time the war started because it was probably not in their hands to stop the war. This has be had become a juggernaut of rising nationalism which made war inevitable. There is immense interesting battles in the first world war though as a war you know it is a kind of stalemate war once Germany attacked France and uh, you know, it got st the war got stuck on the back on the plains of Normandy and Verdun and Somme and all revealed that neither side is bulging. When Germany had to divert its troops to the eastern borders to face the Russian onslaught, and a stalemate was achieved there, it became a war of attrition. And a war of attrition is not a very beautiful war, a sexy war, because people died by the millions, and a lot of these tales are gory and sad. That takes away some of the romanticism because in the second world war armies are moving very fast you see invasion of Russia, invasion of France and all of this was happening. But if you are a student of strategy 
if you like to think about war plans and motives and countries' agendas, then let me assure you, the First World War is more exciting. I say this, when from the age of 15 till probably the age of 36, 37, that is good 22 years, I read every possible book I could get on the Second World War. And every time I heard about all of these battles of Verdun and Somme, I found them very, very boring. Flanders, I mean, there's just millions of people dying over small hills and small postal lands. And uh, it really didn't make sense because the armies could not move in, you know, they were stuck in trenches against each other. A few miles up, a few miles down. But then, when I understood the geopolitical significances that derived out of it, the tussle, it, you know, the animal struggle for survival. You see, the Second World War has very clear objectives and, in a way, heroes and villains. You know, there are there is uh, no justification for the behavior of the, uh, the Nazi regime. But the First World War seems like, you know, a literally animalistic struggle between Germany, Austria, uh, France, your Russia to survive. It is not driven purely out of greed. It is driven out of fear. Fear of every other country that the other country will gobble it itself. Okay. And apart from that, you see a stalemate situation like that produce the best detailed war plans, strategies, army movements to break the impasse. It may not have come, it may have come to naught. Just like a beautiful football match played with extraordinary strategy from both sides, with two equally great teams. Sometimes it's in a draw, one all or zero zero. But that does not take away the nuance of the unbelievably beautiful match played on the ground. If you are a student of nuance, if you are a student of strategy, then I recommend the First World War to you. It is absolutely a more what do you want to call it you know a more nuanced war it's 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 more exciting from a strategy perspective you know it grows on you. you 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 long to hear more about it when i was a kid when i was younger the characters of the second world war fascinated me the wars the battles the quick turnarounds i mean you know germany invades france and within weeks paris is captured that was very exciting to me the fact that the German army was invading Russia and reaching towards Stalingrad and everything was very exciting to me. You see, it was fast paced. But as I've grown, the detailed strategy that was made for the First World War, because every country somewhere thought it may come and they prepared for decades for this. It's the approach and then all approaches not yielding results because you see an insurmountable force was met by an immovable object the excitement of it and the fantasy world of you know thinking oh what could have been done differently that makes first world war an extremely extremely interesting area to read about i have booked one book i could probably given a chance delve into many other books on the first world war I mentioned slightly another book. I would, given a chance, like to go further into this. But the reason I picked this particular book is because it delves into all of these dimensions. It talks about the social aspect of it, why the war became necessary. It builds up from a fact that how people were trying to avoid the war. It plays down, sorry, plays up the role of the diplomat the generals, the head of states and how all of them tried to stop the war and how a war became inevitable because of the forces of alignment. And then it talks about all of these strategies and these battles which uh, today may seem mindless and what was trying to be achieved and how it eventually resulted in, you know, no movement at all. It talks about the final entry of America and how that decisively turned the war and how towards the end you see 
battle weary nations come to terms with the closure of the wall with this i end this vlog and i hope that some of you can also share if there is a particular book on the first world war and the making of the modern world that you find exciting let me know i for one definitely strongly believe that the first world war shaped the next 100 years of human existence and most of the things that you see today can be traced back to that epoch making moment in history and that my friends is the most exciting part of the first world war thank you